What's going on? Just trying to get my lighting set up a little bit. I look real eerie. But my lighting is not for my face. My lighting is for <clears throat> my fly tying, which I'm not going to wear this. I'm not going to be around anyone. Hello. Um, this is Andy at Durangler's. And we are going live. Let's see. I'm not sure. I can't see. I'm on my phone here. I'm not sure if I can see any comments. If Hey, what's up? Are you viewing? If you can see me and you're hearing me, do you want to write a comment real quick? I want to confirm if I can see it. And if I can't, I'm going to quickly open up my laptop. I can't see anything. Of course not. And I'm going to try and go that route instead. Let me see here. Jill, hi. I'm going to maybe go live Facebook. Anyway, this is my, I'm Andy here at Dranglers, and today we are. Oh, I can see comments. What's up, Juan Ramirez? We're uh, this this one is for Juan here because it's fly tying 101, and you obviously need that real. It's a real big thing in your life, I'm sure. Um, we're starting at the starting at the beginning, the basics, the the uh, absolute. For anyone who's a beginner, we run this class at the shop. Uh, anyone who wants to learn, um, we do it for free, but right now we are limited by our local restrictions. So we're gonna do this live. If you have, uh, you know, all this stuff, uh, your own tools, materials, all that, tie along with me. If not, we'll talk about everything. I'm gonna go through everything uh, from just, let's pretend we know nothing. And we'll start there. So uh, this is a great way to get going, learning how to tie flies. Um, we start with uh, the San Juan worm. It's a big one around here. We have the San Juan River, which I, I should probably move so you can see my face until, there we go. I just didn't want to get blown out by these lights. Anyway, uh, I got the San Juan River, which is closed to all non-residents of New Mexico right now, but that should be open someday. So anyway, this fly works great all over the place uh, here in Colorado, <clears throat> but I would like to go through some of my tools first. Feel free to type in with any questions. I am tying, Roger, I'm tying a San Juan worm, a brassy, and uh, the old woolly bugger. Um, classics, to, I learned, the first fly I ever learned was a woolly bugger when I was 11. So we're gonna start there. Um, and I'll try and go through some techniques. I'm running this on my phone, which I actually kind of like, which means I can move around and show you guys different stuff. But if it gets a little weird or a little shaky, let me know. So uh, to start out, I'd like to just basically talk about vices. Um, you can get a, you know, a cheap vice for 20, 30, 40 bucks. We always recommend for anyone, if you're just starting out, if you think you're gonna be doing if you're gonna tie flies for even a year, just spend you know 100 bucks on a peak vise, which are made in Colorado, just the non-rotary clamp vise or the non-rotary rotary pedestals, just under 100. Um, the, I'm using a Dynaking uh, Trekker, which I've had for a long time and really like. Peak vises are a great made in America product that if you tie flies for literally the rest of your life, you'll be able to use that vise. Um, obviously, you can spend four, five, six hundred bucks on a vise if you're tying all day, every day, or all winter, and you can do that if you want, but we always recommend buy once, cry once, 100 bucks is not a ton for a great, great starter vice to get into it. Um, vice is what holds your hook, so you clamp your, uh, your hooks in there, you can see that, kind of wish I could lift this up a little bit and I might try and do that. But a vise should hold a hook securely and when it holds it securely, it shouldn't slip. Sometimes these vices do slip. And there we go, now you can see that a little better. Um, sometimes they don't if they're good. I will say I do like the peak vices for smaller hooks 
and or Renzetti. Uh, Dynaking actually is a pretty great vise um, for myself if I'm tying big streamers, which I tend to tie a lot, or uh, really small stuff that holds really well. This is just going to be a size 14 nymph hook. Anyway, clamps the vise in there. Uh, second tool you should always invest in. Uh, is a decent pair of scissors. Uh, Dr. Slick makes great scissors. I'm using the Loon uh, scissors here. And we actually have a Loon core fly tying kit. Comes in this nice little case. And all of these tools right there, 60 bucks, gets you out the door. And that's everything you really need to tie. Most anything, um, there's hundreds of specialty tools out there that you'll eventually pick up, but that is really, what I'm going to be using tonight. So obviously scissors, those cut. Um, I actually don't mind these scissors. They're a little softer and they, I've bent the points, but I've also bent them back and they sharpen all right. Um, the next tool is what's called a bobbin. <coughs> and this bobbin here holds the thread. Um, again, a loon bobbin. This is just a standard cheapo bobbin. Um, holds thread. I'm going to be using Ultra Thread. Uh, we also use UTC a lot here. Vivas. Um, this is 70-70, which is a pretty small thread. Great for, you know, smaller 14-16 down to 20-22. Um, I use a lot of Semperfly uh, thread as well. Uh, Vivas. Um, this, so those are some good threads. Um, but what the bobbin does is it holds your thread to prevent this from spilling everywhere. You got some control over it. You can manipulate thread like a tool. Um, turns the thread uh, spool into a tool. And then tonight I'll show what's called a half hitch. This is an easy way to finish a fly. Uh, this is a half hitch and also a bobbin. You can see, sorry, bodkin, not bobbin, bodkin, it's confusing. And that bodkin right there is, has a sharp needle point. You can do a lot of different stuff with that. Clean out eyes, uh, pick out dubbing. I, we use these a lot to apply head cement. Um, and then it comes with what's called a half hitch tool. A lot of people don't use this, but it's a quick and easy way to tie off your fly. I'll show that here in a second. Um, and I also use, more importantly, I use a half, uh, sorry, a whip finisher. This is the Loon whip finisher, it's great. I have a Mattarelli whip finish, whip finisher that I bought when I was 13 and I would argue they're the best whip finishers ever and I don't think they're made anymore um, but I also use this guy and it's also got a nice little thread cutter on the back as well so you can when you're done whip finishing cut it off um, hackle pliers these are different than the loons um, but a hackle plier holds I don't want to just say hackle because I use it for a lot of stuff but this hackle plier holds a lot of small materials let me see I don't think I can get that to focus. Oh, maybe I can get it to focus. Maybe not. That's okay. And anyway, this is a great for managing hackle. Uh, small uh, materials. It's hard to hold on that slip that you need to wrap onto the hook. Um, and then there's a variety of other tools. <clears throat> One that I will probably be using tonight just to show everyone is dubbing wax. One of these will probably last you an entire lifetime. Um... Thread, obviously, we talked about, and you know, we got a variety of other tools as well um, dubbing tools, uh, dubbing thread splitters, blah blah blah, hackle gauges that and hook gauges. This hook gauge is kind of lame because lots of hooks that say they're six are different sizes. So, anyway, you could, anyway, that kind of basic tools. So, the, the first thing I want to show everyone is attaching your thread to the hook and feel free to ask any questions I'm gonna anyway this is your thread I tie with my right hand wrapping left hand material so right hand thread hand left hand material hand if you will some people use those terms um, I'm gonna try and use those terms, I'll forget them a lot. But attaching the thread with your material hand, you grab the thread, and then thread hand, grab the thread. You just push that against the thread. And I want everyone, what's up Chris Nelson, how's it going? I want everyone to 
get this into your mind, never wrap towards yourself. You, you can, I'm sure you can get away with it, but it's not the best way to do something. The best way to do this is to push your thread against the hook and wrap away from yourself. And that gives you a little more control and torque and makes everything fluid when you're learning whip finishers and half hitch tools and yada yada. There are times where you're gonna reverse wrap something, but I want everyone to always wrap your thread away from you. So we're gonna start that and we're gonna do, hopefully you can see this, push the thread one, and you don't wanna have a ton of thread either. You don't wanna be doing this. I don't even if I can, know if I can even mimic this. You don't wanna be starting here and wrapping two feet of thread. You want to be wrapping inches of thread. So two inches at most. You're gonna, I wanna start it. I also should start that here. We're gonna start, this is the top. And so since you can't see this, we're gonna make this a little bit easier. The top of the hook is called a shank. As soon as that hook starts to bend down, that is called the bend. The gap of the hook is this width, and then we got a barb, point, and eye. Those are measurements, and there's ways to measure that. So if I were to say, we're gonna say half of the hook shank is right here, so right in the middle of that. One third, you know, is gonna be back here, two thirds up here, three fourths, even a little bit more. I think that's correct, anyway. I'm gonna start my thread at the three fourths point for this, mostly for just to start out. That's where I like to tell a lot of people, does it matter where you start it? Some would say yes, but it really matters um, uh, with the fly you're tying and what that does to the fly. Sometimes it's important to have that thread base start up further up the hook shank. So, let's see if I can. <clears throat> probably wanting to focus on me, which I wish it was focusing on this hook, but that's okay. We are going to see if it works. Oh gosh. Whoa, whoa. So start your thread at the three-fourths point and wrap. And some people will, or some instructors will, you know, wrap five wraps forward and then five wraps back back towards the bend of the hook. I always control this tag end and never let it go. And so what that'll do is right at the three-fourths point, one, and you can just wrap straight backwards over that two, three, four, five, six, seven, this should be fine. Six to seven, uh, maybe less if you're tying a smaller fly. And so you got this tag of thread. Um, you can either cut it with this, or if you hold that Hold down here, hold your thread. You should be able to, with thin thread, not thick thread, you should be able to pull that forward and break it. And that's the thread cutting the thread. So to start the fly, I'm gonna also finish this fly. I'm drinking coffee, DCC. I hope you're all drinking something more interesting. Um, we're gonna wrap up to the end of the fly or to finish the fly. Most flies have what's called a head. It's a small um, ball of thread you've built up right behind the hook eye. And that, again, I like to build a thread for standard flies, not all flies, but for the flies we're doing tonight, we're gonna build a hook head, or sorry, a thread head that is one eye length. So if you were to measure this to here, that's an eye length. We're gonna measure that back to here. So you can see where I'm pointing at. All that forward's gonna be the head. Um, that's traditional. You Some flies and some tires have smaller heads. Uh, it is proper to work towards tying a small head that is good form and also not crowding the eye. What crowding the eye means is you've wrapped thread over that eye you cannot tie tip it onto it. Uh, crowding prevents the fly functioning sometimes, prevents you from being able to 
use this as a fly and it just looks kind of nice. Um, proper form is to, to get used to it. That's why I always have people start their thread one eye length behind and build it right in here so you're not crowding the eye with your materials. If you wrap your materials too far forward, <clears throat> then you're gonna be sad. Um, so thanks for everyone tuning in. If you have any questions, stop me or ask and I don't mind uh, answering it or um, going back over something. So there's two ways to finish a fly, the easy way, or the quick, I shouldn't say the easy way, the quick way to learn, and this is going to be really hard to explain via uh, live, which I don't mind doing it, but I would rather show people. So if you see this and you're like, I don't understand that, just come into the shop and I'll show you how to do it really quick. Uh, first is a half hitch tool. Um, <clears throat> thumbs up. I want to make sure I'm not missing. Okay. Um, half hitch tool. It's got a little, you can see that little hole. What that hole does is slips over the eye of the hook. Um, that just makes it so you are tying a knot and you'll see we're going to wrap this here. Here, I think Rob's going to come poke his head right over here. I bet he will. I hear him coming down the stairs. One, two. I've wrapped that around twice. I've wrapped it around this. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, wrapped it around this half hitch tool, which the knot is now essentially tied. And all you have to do then is if you don't have enough thread, roll it down. And I've only, what I've done is, again, I'll do that again. I've pushed this half hitch tool, I'm holding the thread here, pushed that half hitch tool against it. One, two. And then you want to keep that kind of tight on your fly here. Keep that somewhat tight, but it's hard. Um, and then you're going to take that hole at the end. Why does it make a difference which direction you wrap the thread as long as it's consistent? You don't get the power you have a um you have more torque on that thread um going towards you i mean you might be able to work at keeping consistent thread tension which is very important um but ultimately there will come a time where if you're bringing that towards you you are going to find your flies are going to look different than the ones you're trying to imitate um all professional tires tie over the top. What's up, Joel? Um, thread tension, the ability to attach materials, I find it's a lot easier. So, <clears throat> and we'll get to this. When you're tying thread, sorry, tying materials on the hook, you're wrapping over the top of them. Um, I find it easier to control those materials if you're going over the top rather than pulling them towards you. Ultimately, if your flies look fine and they're catching fish, does it matter? No, probably not. But you won't ever see a professional tire tying towards you. And if you do, I'd like to see their video or who they are. I'm curious. Um, again, half hitch tool. I've tied that. Let's start over. Push that against the thread. One, two. And hopefully that answered your question, Dennis. And then we're going to loosely pull towards the hook. I'm sure there's better answers to why that is. But I started. So anyway, let me not, not skip around. I'm going to do that again. What happened is I wrapped that around twice and then took the eye of this half hitch tool, pulled it over the, put it, put the hole in the half hitch over the eye of the hook loosely let that pull down and what that does is that ties a half hitch knot um, a half hitch knot is kind of a double or er, overhand knot over the top of the hook um, second and this Dennis to me is why you also want to wrap over the top not towards you um, for me, it's a lot easier to use a whip finish when you are wrapping over the top. Uh, whip finisher, and this is going to not look great on live. This is one of those tools. Wow, this light makes me kind of look crazy. Um, <clears throat> this whip finisher, 
Uh, I can show it to you in the shop. It's easier to show, uh, but I'm going to try and explain it. It's one of those things that's like riding a bike. It's really frustrating, and then you get it, and it lives with you forever. Um, so it's got a hook on it right there, you can see, and a little groove. And it's loose. And that loose uh, spinning motion is what ties this knot onto this hook here. So got the hook there on our um, whip finish. You're going to hook that into the thread. So you're hooking that down onto the thread. And then you're bringing that thread with your thread hand. You're keeping, you're not letting this spin yet. You're bringing that thread with the thread hand up through that groove. It's difficult to see there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let go and let that spin. And if you can see that, you can see where my thread has gone. I'm going to pull that tight so you can see it. And so I got thread running through there. And so it looks like a f number four facing downwards. And that four has a point where those two threads are connecting. And I'm gonna bring that point down to my hook here. And wrap, you can see this angle of thread pointing uh, perpendicular to the hook, not parallel is what's actually wrapping over this. This is wrapping over this body of, or this piece of thread. And what it's doing as you do this is tying multiple half hitches. So you call that, you know, four or five, quote unquote, half hitch. So that's finishing the fly with the half hitch tool or the whip finish tool. And I'm gonna do that again. Try not to do it too quick. Hook onto the thread, pull that up through the groove of your whip finish tool and then drop that, let that float. You've, it takes a little bit, it's all about angles of your thread. So you can see that I bring the thread up and then when I drop that, I bring the thread over here. And then I'm going to one, two, three, four, five. So that fly is now finished, though it's not a fly. And I'm not gonna cut it off, I'm gonna say this is the beginning of my first fly, which is a um, San Juan worm. So <clears throat> I've started my thread, three-fourths point, which is going to be right about there. And San Juan worm is just a little aquatic earthworm, aquatic worm, earthworm, however you want to look at it, fish like them. Um, and that, so I got to this point here, and I'm going to be wrapping my thread all the way back to where the fend of the hook starts, right there on this hook. And this hook, I said, was a size 14 um, Daiichi 1560. If you can see that, Daiichi 1560. Um, we use a lot of those. Um, wrap that back, and what you're wanting to do here is cover the thread, sorry, cover the hook with your thread. And right about the bend there, I don't know if people can see that, but right where the bend usually starts, not on all hooks, but on a lot of hooks, is uh, up and down the same measurement as where that hook point starts. I don't know if that's going to be very visible. Probably not, but basically hook point, sorry, not hook point, barb. Um, so if you were to go straight down, the barb's typically right there. So let that thread hang down right there. That's the beginning of the bend of the hook. And so we're going to do what we call a pinch wrap. And since I have my phone, I'm going to try and show you guys what that is. We have ultra chenille here, ultra chenille. Um, it's just a thin chenille that we use to tie, um, worms, a lot of different stuff with this. And you want to find where you're going to tie this piece of material onto the top of this hook. And you don't, you want it, uh, when this is finished, you want some of the material sticking out the back and the front. About even is pretty good. Some people do it their own way. Um, but I want right about there. And so I'm going to do what's called a pin trap. I like where that's at right there. So I'm going to transfer this. So I'm pinching it here. And I'm going to transfer it right there to this hand. And what that does is that 
allows me to do what's called a pinch wrap where I push that down on top of the hook and let's see if I can show you how that looks. Push that down on top of the hook and I have my thread here. I'm going to bring my thread up between my fingers. So, and I'm now pinching that thread and I'm going to bring that thread pinched still down actually down. And what that allows you to do is aim precisely where you want that thread to go because you can kind of feel where it's going. And also what it does is it prevents that material from when you pull or try to tie something, pushing that thread over to the side of the hook. Because most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you want that material to stay on top of the hook. You don't want it to, to be tied to the side or the bottom. Um, Good form, unless you know the pattern calls for it, is just tie that on top of the hook. And with the San Juan worm, I'm going to give it you know three, four wraps on the back, secure. Pull, never pull too hard because that'll push stuff over the top. When you pull to tighten something, pull straight down. Oh, see how that rolled? So I'm going to do that again. Pin trap. Pinch wrap, pull. Wiggle it on and I'm gonna give it one, two more wraps. And then we are gonna pull that, see how there's the longer hanging there. I'm gonna wrap forward, one, two, three. Some guys count their wraps. That's really good form for consistency on a lot of flies, if that's your thing. I don't often. So I, so I wrap my thread to about one eye length behind the eye so an eye length is there so my threads hanging right about there and what that's going to do then is I'm going to pull that down and now that I have control over this a pinch wrap is you know again good form you can also throw the thread over the top not really throw it but kind of keep that on top in one two or a pinch wrap is pinching it there one, two. Now that's on the top of the hook. Um, I've heard it called the heart. I don't know if that's technically what that is, but that big segment blob in the middle of most worms, I'm gonna create that with about 10 wraps, and I've already done four. So there's about another six or so. And then to finish this fly, we're gonna do one wrap underneath. And so to finish, again, our half hitch tool, makes this fly for a lot of beginners really easy uh, to finish flies off because you got this big goofy, sorry, you got this big goofy piece of material hanging off the front. It's hard for some people to learn that. So, you know, one, two, put that over the eye, finish the fly and that fly's finished. Or whip finish, I start my whip finish. So again, hooking from the bottom, pulling that up through the groove, I've created this sideways looking four, if you can see that. It's hard to see. And then bring that there. And then typically I pull that out of the way. This takes a lot of phalangeal dexterity. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tighten it. Um, ask Buck Skillen if anyone knows Buck Skillen about his phalangeal dexterity test next time you see him. That's where I got that term from. He tested it in college. He's very proud of that. Uh, cut that, finally, flies tied. Um, I didn't bring one, of course, but to have a lighter to just singe these ends, ends keeps that from falling apart while you're fishing it. Um, you just hit it with a lighter really quick. That singes it, burns it all tight. Um, so I've tied that off. You can use your handy cutter on that core fly tying kit from Loon Whip Finisher or scissors. So I'm gonna cut that there. And if it were me fishing this fly, I think the back turned out great. I think this actually is a little long on the front. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit there. Buck would have tied it better. Buck tied me a, a pretty cool, interesting fly the other day and I fished it. It had like 47 wraps of lead in it. It was a beast. So there is the San Juan worm first fly. So we learned a few things there, <clears throat> starting, finishing a fly, uh, pinch wraps, 
You're welcome, Joel. The eye length tip really helps because a lot of times, if you don't think about keeping that, um, starting your head here, you tie everything off right here, and then crowding starts when you start to wrap and finish your thread. But if you finished it here and tied everything off right around there, then you got a little bit of place to finish that fly and it's not gonna crowd that eye. And it is a good tip even for me, because I still, to this day, sometimes when I haven't tied for a little bit and I wanna tie one or two flies, crowd my eyes. But we're gonna avoid that on this next fly, which is called the Brassy. <clears throat> brassy is a great little fly. I'm sure most people have heard of it. Um, what kind of dexterity? Phalangeal dexterity. <laughs> um, yeah, you're very welcome, Chris. Uh, I assume, which is funny, I asked him if phalangeal dexterity for Buck meant he was great at video games. 10% and... of the shank is the head. Nice. Um, and he said no. He has no hand-eye coordination, but he has phalangeal dexterity. <laughs> so, same hook. Uh, we're going to be tying this one here. And this is the brassy. And so I'm going to try and stay on track and time here. So we're going to go through this one a little quicker because I've we've just demonstrated a whole lot of techniques. So, only buzz skills or seriously, that guy. <laughs> Such a class classic line so i'm gonna keep tying with this same thread because i like this uh 70 70 denier uh ultra thread and i'm starting at the uh three fourths point maybe even a little bit further five eight fourths or four fifths and i'm gonna start right there one two three see that didn't tighten my vice enough there we go should hold in there pretty well and what we're doing is pushing the thread on there. One, two, three. And I want to do a few wraps backwards just over the top of this tag I'm holding. And then you can cut it with your scissors or just pull and break it off. When you pull that, you always want to make sure you're pulling down on your bobbin because that's what will cut it. Um, and so we're going to work with a new material tonight called brass wire. Or sorry, copper wire, not we're tying the brassy. The color looks like brass, but is in fact copper. Um, stuff here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off three, four inches of that. Cut it off the spool. Don't use, here's another tip. Don't use your good scissors for cutting wire. Don't use these that you're going to be using for fine work. Use some cheap pair of scissors, beat up pair, or we have these rising D-bar pliers with a little scissor on them. Those work great. And what I'm gonna do is I like tying this piece of material like we talked about. You can tie it on the top. I'm gonna actually tie it, and I prefer to tie it on the side, which can be a little trickier, but it, not hard to do with a pinch wrap. And all what we're instead of pinch wrapping it on the top, pinch wrapping it on the side. And wire tends to, I'm gonna show you the for the easy way too to do that. You can go at it at an angle. This is the Charlie Craven trick he showed me with wire, or he did a long time ago at one of our demos. And so this is, if you can see that there, the wire, it's at two different angles. It's at an angle away from the hook and also a wangle, an angle, a wangle, down. And what that'll do is when you tie that on, it ties it directly on the side closest to you. And then I'm gonna do two wraps and pull that rather than cut that big tag. And just be careful you don't pull that all the way out of the loop of thread you just made, but pull it at least one eye length behind the eye and then we're gonna start wrapping. And we're gonna hold that and keep wrapping backwards. And I'm, what I'm doing is holding in that a little towards me at an angle, about 30 degree angle, uh, directly to the side. So what that's doing is 
tying that down on the side of the hook shank. I just like how this ends up. Um, you're welcome to tie it on the top. I wonder if you can see that. If you can, maybe. So we got that there. So my wire is secured to the thread and I'm gonna do one, or sorry, wire is secured to the hook. I'm gonna do one more wrap and then start wrapping forwards. And I like to keep these wraps back to back. Um, gives it a very even body so that what we're gonna do next is wrap this wire. And when you wrap this wire, you want an evenly segment, segmented body. I wanna make sure we're gonna be on time because I think Facebook cuts you off after an hour. Could be wrong. So, got our wire there. And we're gonna start wrapping. And to do this, you just hand it off. And you wanna go wrap forward, not let it wrap backwards. And you're gonna be wrapping. Make sure those wraps butt up against one another. And this also, this is the medium wire. It gives a, on a size 14, I think is a great size. Smaller sizes, 16, 18, 20s. You might want to bump that down to the small wire. They also make a BR wire, which stands for brassy, which is kind of middle between small and medium. And that's a good size for those. So I'm getting this all the way up to about the three fourths point. This wire is pretty stiff and it's malleable so it doesn't unwrap when you wrap that all up there. And I am going to then tie it off. One, two. And it doesn't feel super secure. I did three wraps there. Um, but it will be pretty secure, especially after what we do next. And then I usually do one or two wraps in front. So three wraps behind, also on this side. Wrap tying that down to the hook two wraps up here just to kind of lock it in. And rather than cut this with our scissors, which you can do, we're gonna do what's called a helicopter. Joel knows about that. And we're gonna helicopter this over the top of the hook, a little bit away from us until that breaks. And now it's perfectly cut. Um, next is to, I'm going to give this just a little bit of a thread base so we don't bulk it up too much. And I'm actually going to wrap one or two wraps back over the top of this wire. And what that does is secures everything in. So, you know, you get a big fish that bites this, pulls on it. It's not going to pull that loose because that can happen. Um, thread or sorry, wire is pretty slick. Um, Tighten that down there. And then we are gonna use, <clears throat> I'm gonna just use standard dubbing. You can use uh, peacock curl. I'm just gonna use black dubbing here. And what this does is gives that little bug, uh, a little buggy head. So this thing, uh, the brassy can represent a lot of things. I think it was originally tied to match a cased caddis or caddis pupa. Um, I like it for a lot of things. I think it's just a good attractor and it's easy to tie. But what it, a lot of people, especially in smaller sizes, tie it for is a midge. And, you know, size 22, 24, it is a great midge pattern, especially in other colors, which we have a lot of small wire colors. Um, black, olive, purple, blue even, those are great colors. So I'm going to pull out about two, three inches of thread and hit that thread with the dubbing wax. I'm also, with my finger, gonna touch that there. That gives me a little tackiness on my fingers too. Grab some of this out. This is our dubbing. I'll grab a little bit just so you can see that. It's just like, as a lot of people think, dryer lint. And so for dubbing, perfect to wear a black shirt. Um, I'll show you what that looks like with some paper here. We are gonna touch that to the thread Get a little bit on that thread, but more than just touching it, we're actually spinning it. And you're always like snapping your fingers. That's the same move, but it's strengthen that finger and you want to go only one direction. You don't want to do it this way because that turn wraps it onto the thread and then pulls it off the thread. So you always want to go one direction like the band. And the trick to dubbing anything and dubbing well in learning how to dub is not to take this whole glob and put it on your thread in one spot. 
you're taking a tiny amount, pulling it out of that glob, and attaching it to your thread. And for better looking flies, you can use spit too, I try not to do that, but I almost did. Um, better looking flies, it's best to thinner, what's called a dubbing noodle, which you can see there, a better dubbing noodle, uh, a thinner dubbing noodle over a longer piece of thread. And if you want it buggy, you can do the same thing. You just do a little wrap so you can kind of see, or a little bit of a, can you see that there where you, that lower part's kind of half wrapped on, not too crazy, where these ones are wrapped really tight. So I think that's probably enough dubbing. Um, but less dubbing per, you know, inch or whatever over a longer piece for big, or a longer uh, section of thread over for more, um, more bulk rather than just bulking it up because that gives you more control. Sometimes it won't. Hey, what's up, Tyler? Talking midges. Um, so we are going to wrap that over the top there and we have a little bit of a dubbing bald head we're not trying to make what's called a or we can give you the technical terms here are I always mix them up but I'm gonna do it not do it today abdomen which is this if you think abs and thorax so like chest region where a lot of lungs are um, so we're getting to that buggy part, which I actually really like for this fly. I want it buggy. And then we've left about a eye length of um, shank behind the eye. Got a little bit of a bud, uh, buggy dubbing kind of going everywhere. What I what you can do with that is take, take your fingers there and just pull that all back and do a couple wraps. So that keeps all that dubbing out of there you can pick it out with if you want to make it more dubbing or more buggy um you can oh i don't like how that looks you can actually just unwrap and start over i like how this looks i like having that little bit of bugginess so now i'm building a head and that thread head is halfway and halfway done um it's going to get completed when you do your half hitches or your whip finish and i'm going to try and I don't know if I can get that. I think Facebook's trying to focus on my face, not on my fly. So I'm gonna whip finish one, two, three, four. Some people are done if you're super anal and you don't want that fly to come undone. One, two, three, four, a second time. And then we're gonna use our cutter and just pull, pull that thread tight, push that up against your fly and cut it. I'm gonna cut it as good as I could have. That's all right, because this size 14, so this would be a good animus bug um, for like a little case, quick case caddis or free living caddis if you want to keep it a little bit. Um, let's see if I can get this to focus. I bet I can't, but you never know. Anyway, you can see my gross fingers. Um, so that's the brassy, and that's a great second pattern to work on. Um, once you learn the brassy, you can learn a lot of different patterns, um, small betas, um, other midge patterns. Uh, you got dubbing and wire wrapping, and you can do a, little, a lot with that. Um, let's see here. Final fly, and we're going to do it a little bit quicker because we've learned some basic techniques. They call it a booger. Actually, people who don't really know what it's called call it a booger. Um, it's called a woolly bugger. We're gonna tie a kind of a crazy colored woolly bugger. <clears throat> and I want to tie a crazy colored woolly bugger just so you guys can see the different parts to it easily. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm changing from my 140, sorry, I'm changing from my 70 denier thread to a UTC 140. You see that there? Uh, there we go. And how, this is the question. A lot of times you'll break your thread. I haven't broken thread yet, so I haven't had a chance to talk about that, but a lot of people break thread, and I think that's a good thing to do right out of the gate when you're a beginner, 
because if you break your thread a couple times, you know how, uh, how much pressure you can put onto that, um, that torque or the, however you want to say it, on pulling that thread, tightening stuff down before it breaks. If you don't break your thread, you'll never know how it breaks. Um, and I break thread still frequently here and there. Um, there's a technique to salvage a fly if you break thread, which if I break thread tonight, we'll talk about it. But if I don't, then we'll talk about it some other day. Oh, so I got a clean cut thread right there, bright orange that you can see on this, which is awesome. And I'm feeding it through the bottom of my bobbin. There are bobbin threaders, um, which allow you to thread the bobbin. Uh, Loon even makes one, but like a straw pulls it through. So I'm also right on top of my streamer hook. So let me move some of this stuff here. And tonight we're gonna be using 3x long streamer hook. Actually, let's use this. This one you're gonna be able to see a little bit better. Bigger hook. Um, Three or four X long for a bugger, um, which is a streamer hook. I like the 1720. Uh, ooh, that's so bright. Uh, from Daiichi. Um, those are great streamer hooks. Um, this is a size four. Um, I think I grabbed a size six here. Same thing. Bigger hook. Uh, four, six, eight, ten. Great woolly bugger sizes. The typical... Wooly bugger around here is going to be like a six or an eight. Um, great for lakes, great for the animus, great for pretty much anywhere there's trout. <clears throat> you can put beads on the front of these uh, flies, give it a little more weight. You can also wrap the underbody with lead or do both. I'm not going to do either of those tonight because this is a beginner class and I want to talk about beginner stuff first. We'll get to that later. So I'm going to start this at the three-fourths point. One, two, three, four. And again, we're hitting that there and wrapping back over that tag. And sometimes 140 you can break. Let's see if I can do it. I did it. That was super cool. Sometimes it won't break, so you just got to cut it. And then I'm going to wrap all the way back. And I want to cover that. That gives a little bit of a base for everything else we're going to attach. So we have a lot of different ways to do what's called, or attach what's called marabou. I had it right here. There it is. Um, got our marabou. And how we attach this, or how we even go about picking it out and deciding what we're going to use, is you got this big mess disaster. I'm going to show you, I think, what I think is a easy way with what ends up with, I think, a lot of waste. There's also a good way to not end up with a lot of waste, but it's a little bit easier to do it this way. So, Marabou is actually a very, has a lot of movement, you can see that. Um, has a lot of flow to it, especially in the water. It moves and swims really well. And Marabou is actually a feather, and the feather there, you can see, and I got two of them. Two options. Actually, there's probably more than two options for doing this. What I, what some people do is just take one side of that feather, and I usually do this myself, is I just strip off that side, line up those, those fibers the best I can, and then tie it in. What I would rather do, for demonstration purposes, is since we got this feather here, I'm going to find that stem. Let's see. There we go. Find that stem and cut that just right at the stem about an inch and a half down just to get a good spot to start tying that because i don't actually want that stem in the tail you'll see in a minute what that looks like because i think that impedes the movement of this fly which is why i think the best way to do it is actually strip off both sides but for beginners that can be a big mess and it's pretty easy to learn this so we're cutting off that stem again, stripping back the longer fibers, cutting that stem off. And now we have just this big flowing thing. And what we do, it looks like kind of like a Muppet, like uh, animal's hair from the electric mayhem. And what I'm doing here is I got now two feathers. That's a fair amount for this fly. So, um, I think it's a good amount. 
I'm trying to see where you can kind of see how those tips line up. I'm trying to line those tips up to where when you pull it all together, all those tips, there's no, oh, you can see there isn't. Well, maybe you can't see it, but one section of this is not lined up with the other. So I just adjust them, pull them together so that those tips line up exactly correct. And so we're gonna measure this tail. And how we measure this tail is I wanna keep that, a lot of measurements are based on hook length again. So I want that tail to not exceed the length of this hook. Um, some This is how when I was a child and I had no one to teach me, I had tails that were four times as long. They caught fish, so I can't totally say one way or the other. Uh, kind of the, if you want it to look like flies in, our, in a fly shop, keep it about the length. Um, a little bit longer is not a bad thing. <clears throat> and I want to show you a trick to keeping this all, because marabou can kind of be frustrating. So, eh, it's a little bit longer. It's about a centimeter longer. I don't mind, because that's right there where I'm pinching it is where I'm going to tie this in. So, to transfer that, we got our tie-in point. We just transfer that to our material hand, which is the back of the hook. Pinch it, and now we have these two big giant things. And what we're going to do, push that on top of the hook like the chenille from our San Juan worm, and pinch wrap. So again, you got that there. Pinch wrap. And what marabou does really well is roll over the top of the hook and look like crap. So you want to fight that as much as possible. Two, three pin traps. First of all, good tight wraps prevent that. And a couple different spaced wraps in that spot prevent that. Let's see. There we go. And then what else? So if I pull this, you'll see it. Watch. Maybe I'll break my thread. Oh, I tied that on really good so it's not going to roll. Just tight wraps make that work. But then you got this big disaster thing here. Um... This is a Charlie Craven trick. A lot of tires want to just cut that off there. And what it does is it creates this big bulge right at the back. So what you're going to do is do just a few evenly spaced wraps. You don't have to do this all the way up. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling this forward with my material hand, which seems weird. But with my <clears throat> um, thread hand, I'm doing wraps over that on top of the hook. And those are just spaced out wraps. So once we get to about a little past the halfway point of the shank, I'm going to do one, two, three more wraps right there. Actually, two is probably enough. So that's now bound to the top of the hook. And what that does is it prevents you from having a giant bulge out the back that kind of builds, and you'll see why that builds. Um, but it also gives you a nice taper to keep everything in place. So what I'm going to do here then is I'm just going to pull all the, that marabou up and to my, the best of my ability, cut that all off. And that's all been cut off. And so with your thread, just quick, tie that down back and forth. You don't have to make good, beautiful wraps. What that does, it just binds everything in place. And now that section and everything else is going to prevent roll that's going to prevent rolling uh especially when we do our next couple moves um next move is our depending on what kind of bully bugger tire you are everyone has a little bit different way of doing this i'm doing the wire technique i think it's more durable and i like how it looks in the end so same wire that we use for the brassy medium cutting off a Five inch piece. <clears throat> See where my thread is right at about the halfway point right there Maybe a little bit further back, which is fine doing the same thing tying that to the side of the hook and I got this little you can see I'm kind of stabbing it this direction. It's at an angle under the hook. It's up in a Gibbs and I'm one two wraps and then I'm gonna pull this back to millimeters from where that thread has tied it down and wrap. Oh, see what happens if you pull too hard? Pull it out. So, there. Wrap, 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 and wrap backwards. And I'm keeping that on the side of the hook. And I want that, you don't have to do it, top of the hook's fine. I just like the side of the hook because it makes the next step when we use it easier. And you're not going to use it right away. So that's just going to hang out, sticking out the back of your hook. Um, two more materials. Um, 
The first one is uh, chenille, ultra ch or sorry, not ultra chenille, rayon chenille. This is more of a craft chenille that got repurposed into fly tying many moons ago. And you got a card of it, and just pull off, you know, six, eight inches. Um, it's better to pull off a little more the first time you tie this fly, just so you know, don't run out before you need to. And then cut it. And so that chenille has a core. It's um, a very fine, it's almost like a pipe cleaner, but in the core, it's not metal, it's thread. I'm gonna try and see if you can see it. And what I do here, I wanna pull a lot of that material away to expose that core. Which I don't know if you can see there. Yeah, there you can see it. That black core there. And then I tie the core with a pinch wrap, not the actual material, but just the core, to the top of the hook. With a pinch wrap. And then we are tied in. That's bound on there. And then same thing. It's good to have a little spring like this. And that's what's gonna hold this back here, back. See that? And now I am going to go forward. I'm not tying on my hackle quite yet. I will in a moment. And I'm tying to one eye length behind the eye. Um, this eye is bigger, so therefore the distance from the eye to the thread is gonna be a little bit bigger, which on bigger flies, um, has bigger materials and makes more sense. Um, finally, <coughs> excuse me, we are at the, sh uh, the hackle. We're gonna use a bright chartreuse with the red. It's gonna look sweet. Um, I like to have, for woolly buggers, you can use a variety of saddle hackle. Um, kind of schlopping is a good <clears throat> um, hackle to use but it's huge saddle hackle <clears throat> with the right saddle hackle works great some of these pieces are a little shorter than I want them to be but I'm gonna make it work for our purposes and there we go so I got my feather here nice barred chartreuse Looks sweet. Um, rather than tying that onto the back, um, palmered style, I'm gonna be tying that onto the front. So you got a lot of fluff back here. I am going to cut that thread, uh, cut that there, cut that off, and then expose a little bit of the stem with a few trims on either side. This feather is not as big as I want it to be, but. Got the stem there, and we're not gonna tie it on because we haven't gotten there yet. We are gonna wrap our chenille, make sure it's not wrapping down any of that there. We are wrapping end over end like the wire forward, and that's just building this body. Make sure you cover that how you want to. Um, See how that taper and keep it as good so it dropped off a little bit right there. So I'm here, got a little bit of space for the eye, and I'm tying that down to three. And then two wraps over the in the front just to lock it in place. And then I'm going to cut that. And now that's ready. So we got our feather. I like the angle to be forward back over the fly, not that direction. Um, it means the fibers are gonna angle correctly when you tie this in. I think I got a little bit too big of a stem. And I'm gonna tie that, a little bit of a pinch wrap, right on top. There we go. So now that's locked in. So we got two moving parts here, or we will in a second. We got the hackle and the wire. And what I am going to do, we got our hackle pliers, and we grip the tip of that hackle 
right there, and wrap backwards. And we're wrapping still over the top of the hook. Um, reason being is that will flow back. See what happens? Sometimes these little stems break, but it didn't break enough to justify doing anything crazy. So we're just gonna reattach and wrap that. And I'm probably gonna get one, two, three, four. You know, I don't like that. I'm, so if you don't like something, Bob Ross, just work with it. And I'm gonna do my first wrap right at the eye. It's just a happy little mistake. Start over, it's okay. One, two, three, four. Aim for 10% of the shank to be the head, all the way to 5%, which is perfect, yep. So aim for 10% of the shank to be the head. So yeah, aim high and you'll hit it right about way up. Hit it right about right. Uh, five. And so what that does is I'm ending. I've ended. See how I have nowhere more to wrap? That's great because I'm right at the back of the hook. And so now we got our wire. And what we're doing is we're using that wire and we're wiggling it to pull it through that those fibers. And we want that to bind that hackle in place. So wiggling it keeps those uh, hackle fibers from uh, breaking, um, or sorry, getting bound down by the wire. They're still give, got a lot of um, got a lot of movement there. It's not binding this all down, but this wire is reinforcing that hackle as well. And as you bring that wire to the front, make sure none get bound down. The front could use a little more bulk, but it's all right. And then we're gonna just wrap the living daylights out of that. And if you were to put a, uh, a uh, underbody of lead wraps, lead wire, that would have built that up a little more. So. I've gotten about four or five wraps on top of that wire, two wraps in front of it, and then helicopter more towards, that's where I'm going with the helicopter, towards the camera away from my body, and that's pulling it tight. And this is one of those flies that I build a little more of a head, especially with wire, and I'll even hit it with uh, glue. So now that's done, take that, fingers, pull everything back, and you are going to build a little bit of a head, you know, 10 wraps if you want, but I'm just binding that wire down. A little tapered head. And then, finally, whip finish. And I have not too badly crowded the eye. Crowded it a little bit, but that is also the nature of this thread. It just likes to slip really bad. Um, working with it, you will get used to it. I'm doing triple um, whip finishes. And then what I typically do with a, I believe I have some here, uh, with a bigger streamer, I actually, myself personally, if this is a fly for myself, um, I use Zappa Gap. Sometimes that gets really messy, but it also locks everything in place so much that a fish might rip it apart, but the head is still intact. Um, you can also use just a head cement. This might even be head cement there. Either way, I'm gonna show you how that works. So take your bodkin. Don't, you have, we have applicators too. Those work really well. I actually like the bodkin move. Dip that in there, get a little bit on the, if you can see that, and then just drop that on the hook. We're almost done. Okay. Rob's over here. Um, so you drop that on the hook head or the head of your fly and it'll soak in and you're good to go. Be careful with the fumes. All right, that's the woolly bugger. And stop in the shop or um, shoot us an email, deranglers at deranglers.com. Uh, we have a chat service on our website too if you have any questions on that or shoot us a message on Facebook and we'd love to help you out. Um, hopefully we'll be doing more in-person 
101s and 201s as well as our hopefully our springtime uh, fly fishing 101s and 201s will be going off as well. Uh, thanks and give us a call with any questions. Take care.